telling it like it is. The Pittsburgh Steelers don't play perfectly, but their record is perfect. 10-0, and oh, the first time in franchise history, as Mike Tirico mentioned last night, the 18th time in the Super Bowl era that we have had a team reach 10-0. and oh. And if it was the Patriots with 10 wins and no losses and six games left, the specific six games left that the Steelers have left, it would be the headline of every sports show. It was we would have come on air talking about can the Patriots go? You're right. You're right. The the Steelers, the most overlooked, disregarded, and irrelevant ten and O team of the eight team that have ever been ten and O. And I can't say that with authority, even though I really don't know. There probably have been some other ten and O teams that people were like, eh. But that's the attitude with the Steelers, just kind of like, eh. And it's just a sense they're eventually going to lose. And every week they just show up, Chris, and they keep winning. Yeah, I mean, you're you're right. Like I. Off the top of my head, just thinking about it, too, I I mean, I I agree with you, Mike. I think there's less to do and less of a big deal being made about them as 10-0 as at least I can ever remember. You know, I I really can't. I mean, I I feel like we were making a way bigger deal last year with the Patriots being like 8-0 and things like that, definitely. And what is it? I mean, what exactly? I've been thinking about this, you know, just like why, why is that? And is it just because... Like the offense can look ugly at times, and it's just, it, it's not exactly like a well oiled machine. And then all of a sudden it has like this flurry of like awesomeness, and then it goes back to average. I don't know really what it is or why, but you're right. It's just nationally, they're not quite getting the credit you would normally see as a 10 and 0 team. I think one of the factors is that they are not blowing everyone yeah. out the way the last undefeated team did, the Patriots in 2007 where it was Globetrotters, Washington Generals almost every week. And if it was one of those occasions where the game was just kind of close, it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. They almost took down Goliath. And uh, it, 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 all of these games, not all of them, but most of them are yeah, close. A lot of them. And even yesterday, yeah. the 27-3 finish, it looked early on like the Jaguars were there to play. The Jaguars right. were up 3 nothing. They did a, an ill-advised onside kick, although if it worked, it would have been genius. That's kind of how it goes for onside kicks. But, uh, you know, the Steelers eventually pulled away from them. But, but they're just kind of doing it quietly, methodically, and we'll see how many more weeks they can continue to do now, it starting Thursday night against the Baltimore. Do you, would you, I raised this question. Are they not made as a big of a deal because they wouldn't be favored if they had to play the chiefs one, one versus one. I mean, does that, does that play into that? That may have something to do with right? it, that the lone unbeaten team is not the best right? team or at least not viewed NFL. as the best team. Right. Yeah that the Chiefs still have that aura. And, hey, it may be the Chiefs that ultimately hang the first loss on the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we can only hope that they get a chance to face each other, presumably, hopefully, ideally, in the AFC Championship game. But that is still to come as the season continues to unfold. Superlatives time. What do you have for us first, Christopher? How about 1.21 gigawatts? Sin. Oh, I like it. Oh, baby, because Watson was on fire. My man, Deshaun Watson. I mean, he was on fire yesterday. I know that wasn't the marquee game at 1 o'clock. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What does 1.21 gigawatts? You got me all excited that you were going to have some great Back to the Future reference. Him I being just, on fire has I said nothing Watson. to do with Watson. I thought you were going to say. He was electric. He was electric, Deshaun Watson. 1.21 uh-huh. gigawattson. That's what I said, Okay. It's my superlative yeah, segment. Yeah. Back off, okay. all right? Thumbs down. <laughs> two well, thumbs down, two middle fingers up. Oh, thank you. Well, I feel like every time I talk about Deshaun Watson, I end up singing the song, so I had to give something else there. And I didn't want to go like, Houston, we have liftoff. <laughs> I couldn't do that it's either. It's not the same, but you know? that's okay. <laughs> all right, but either way, all right. he was unreal yesterday. He really was. You know, I know we talked about in the pregame show, Coach Junji talked about it so much too, just – the the Patriots always take away what you do best and they couldn't stop the Sean Watson yesterday, you know? And, and like I was saying, it wasn't the marquee game at one o'clock, but for those who didn't see it or want to see it or whatever, just go back and watch the highlights and watch the Sean Watson's best throws of the game. It'll kind of tell you everything you need to know. Tight coverage, scrambling, you know, people around him in the pocket, just guy open by four inches. He throws lasers in there. He was unstoppable yesterday. He was on his game. It was as good as I saw him play all year long. And uh, we haven't talked about him a lot. He's been playing amazing football. He's on a bad team. 
that we know that. But yesterday he uh, showed his worth for sure. There was a report yesterday, I think it was from ESPN, that owner Cal McNair has already consulted with Deshaun Watson regarding the next coach. And that's a controversial subject because they didn't consult with Aaron Rodgers before they hired Matt LaFleur. You typically don't talk to the quarterback about the coach. But you know what? When you have a quarterback that possibly is getting to the point where he's had enough if there's a bone you can throw, if there's a thing you can do, a decision you can make, a relationship you can spark where he's going to be happy, maybe you do it because clearly he's all they have. Now, credit to J.J. Watt. He had four deflected passes yesterday of Cam Newton. Back to the future for J.J. Watt. 1.21 jiggle watts. I got you there eventually, right? But but uh, other than, than Deshaun and the games when J.J. can spin it back to the future, they got nothing cupboards bare and and as you said last night excellent observation bill belichick wants to take away what the opposing offense does best you still sometimes can't take it away even when you know it's deshaun watson and and he was and i always worry about him when i see him run and embrace contact because he's kind of wiry yeah he's not thick like a russell wilson and i just worry he's going to get himself injured again but man he took on a couple of patriots and just forced his way into the end zone yeah. and, and 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 that to me cried out I'm sick of this expert right. deleted right. attitude. Like, I'm, enough of this season. I'm Enough of 2020. It's kind of like what we all would like to do to 2020. That's what he did to the Patriots on that play. No, he did. He was. He seemed like on a mission from the get-go yesterday. He, he did. And, yeah, running over Devin McCourty that way. I mean, you don't see that happen too often. But uh, he he is just such a phenomenal talent. The way he can move, you know, he's a top level thrower of the football he makes good decisions and you know we talked a little last week when we talked about the quarterback rankings and all that you know he he wants to stay in the pocket and throw the football he wants to dice you up that way and that's what makes him so special and cool that's where I think you know him and Mahomes are special because they want to throw it and 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 carve you up with their right arms but when they're like oh nobody else is open oh I I can rely on this unbelievable ability to get away from people and make moves now and that's where it becomes unstoppable in games like yesterday where the Patriots don't have one marquee, you know, pass rusher in their front seven, and they just couldn't contain him. It didn't matter. So he made runs, throws, whatever he wanted, but it was pretty awesome. Yeah, and look, it, it makes it even more impressive because they're not playing for anything. And and I was thinking about an I won't be back award for the death of the Terminator because lost in what – Watson did good is what the Patriots did not do good and the Patriots by all appearances are done although I guess they could still run the table and sneak in I don't see that happening and one of the reasons why it's going to be difficult for the Patriots is because of and I remember this old song from Jim Croce in the 70s bad bad Leroy Brown these are the bad bad Cleveland Browns and not bad in a bad way bad in a good way they are going to go 10 and 6 write it down they have been on that formula all year long. They win the games they should. They lose the games they should. And when you look at the balance of the schedule, it works out to 10-6. and six. And look, hey, the way the Ravens are going, maybe they'll beat Baltimore and maybe it'll be 11-5. and five. But if it's 10-6, and six, Chris, then the question is, is it the 2007 Browns who went 10-6 and six and didn't make it? Or is it going to be more like the Browns who did make it in 2002? I think they were 11-5 and five when they made it in 2002. The right. only time the reconstituted Browns have made it to the postseason. In 22 seasons, they've made it once, and they lost to the Steelers in the wild card round. But, you know, it's not pretty. It is boring, as I mentioned last night. But it's effective. They're getting it done. They had the pick six of Carson Wentz that really started things off. But even after that, it just kind of felt sluggish and plodding. And then Nick Chubb has the big run where he slams the guy to the ground with the stiff arm, and they got the shot of Baker Mayfield uh, very giddy over what Nick Chubb was able to do. And, and they just get it done. They take your best punch, they counter punch, and they eventually win as long as it's a game they should win. They, they are not going to get very far, though, if they can't flip one of these games that they should lose into a game that they win. And we talked about the Steelers potentially going 16-0, and the last man standing in the way of an undefeated season. 
the same team that delivered the last loss to the Browns in 2017, a game that Corey Coleman, if he doesn't drop the pass, remember that? Yeah. The Browns win right. that game against the Steelers. Right. Now it's it's the other way around just a few years later where it could be the Browns the last chance to keep the Steelers from going 16 and up. Yeah, there, there's there's a lot to like about the Browns. I mean, they, I mean, first off, I mean, what's it? Three games in a row and these just horrible elements. And you know, to their credit, I know they lost the game against the Raiders, but you know, Houston last week, this game here, they don't make any mistakes. You know, they're playing the right way, which leads itself to like kind of an ugly, boring football game to what you're saying. You know, they're not going to let their offense ruin the game. They, they weren't, you know, they, they seem to understand the big picture of how the game needs to be played that day, according to their opponent or whatever else. And Stefanski's phenomenal at being patient with the run game. They really don't put a lot on Baker Mayfield's shoulders and their defense has just progressively gotten better throughout the year too. And they make a few plays here and there. So, you know, I, I like them. I don't know if I'm ready to go like playoff football team quite yet. I don't know about that. Um, and I think, yes, there's three losses on their schedule possibly. And, and I listen, even the New York giants, the way they're playing, I don't think that'll be easy e either, but uh, there, there's still a lot to be proud of there for a seven and three football team who looks like right now, you know, they're going to be getting in for sure. Um, all right. You good with that one? Well, I have one last thing I wanted to yeah. say. I mean, they're two and zero coming out of the bye. They have Jacksonville next week. And then the real test, the, the yeah. opportunity to win a game, they should lose back to back Titans Ravens. Ooh. That that's good. And, and the Ravens game, a Monday nighter, December 14 in Cleveland, That'll uh, be big. a great test for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, that's what the the bottom of this AFC playoff picture. I mean, a lot of these teams play each other and there's a lot of crossover here. So that's going to be, you know, there's, there's still meat left on the bone, you know, for lack of a better way to say here as far as, you know, Tennessee, Cleveland, Las Vegas at 7 and 3, 7 and 3, 6 and 4, and of course Baltimore and Miami aren't out of the hunt. Uh we know that. I that's where I think I I want to go next with just, you know, the pump the brakes award. You know, and that goes to the Miami Dolphins and just the way they played yesterday. Pump the brakes on all of it. You know, there we were thinking, man, Denver Broncos been all over the place. Drew, Le Drew Locke, you know, bruised ribs. He's been inconsistent. All of these things. Surely Miami will go in and control the football game. Well, you know, Denver did something we haven't seen so far yet. with it. They didn't let, like, the special teams and defense beat them. That's what we've seen so far through through the Tua era is the other phases of football have been very, very impressive, and we haven't seen Tua have to deliver. And yesterday, Vic Fangio came with a game plan. Not only was it great on the offensive side of the ball, running the ball and doing things like that, but Tua was obviously flustered and confused with what he was seeing. You know, yeah, he got sacked, certainly, but there was a lot of sack and pressure too of a guy that's a young quarterback that looked like he didn't know what he was seeing downfield or nobody was open. I'll be excited to go back and watch the film and see what it was, but it certainly wasn't a good look. You know, we talked those two weeks, right, Mike, where two of it was screens, bootlegs, one-on-one -on -one jump balls. They kind of took away that yesterday, and now this is the next phase, and not to downgrade two or anything, but just it's another phase in his development as a quarterback, and we saw yesterday – he had a few bumps in the road, and that's why he was benched late in the game for Ryan, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, I mean, what happened yesterday is kind of what I thought could have happened last week in yeah, the game against right. the Chargers. And it, 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 we, we kind, and we didn't go all in because we get caught up in the story, and Tua is such a nice guy, and we want him to do well. But we've kind of been on the lookout for this moment where – Somebody's going to come up with something that he's not going to be able to counter, that Brian Flores isn't going to be able to overcome. Right. Chan Gailey, the offensive coordinator, won't be able to solve, and that's what Vic Fangio did. We didn't expect it from the Broncos yesterday because we don't expect anything from the Broncos currently, but that's what made it more stunning. So Tua was benched for Ryan Fitzpatrick, who ultimately became Fitztragic, who ultimately will take a seat next week for Tua. And, you know, usually what – the prevailing mood would be among media and fans is you don't yank a young quarterback out of the lineup and put it back in and take him out and put him back in. And that's going to hurt his confidence and it's going to hurt his development. I, Hey, Brian Flores knows what he's doing. He's done enough with that team 
in a year and a little more than a half to get me to say, if, yeah. if you believe it'll work, I have no reason to doubt you, Coach Flores. Uh, agreed. He's he's pulled all the right strings, pushed all the right buttons. And, you know, we've talked about this too before. If your top 10 pick can't handle a little scrutiny and being benched and then being put back down there, then damn, he ain't your guy. He's not your guy. Move on then. So, uh, and I think Tua, he realizes because Brian Flores has great people skills and knows how to read people and everything like that. He realizes this guy is able to, you know, take this as a learning experience, grow. It wasn't their day. It certainly wasn't. There was a good game plan like we talked about with Denver. Denver's Denver's offense stayed on the field a whole lot. I mean, it was the same running play all game long. The Broncos just pulled the weak side guard, kicked out the defense end, and Lindsey and Gordon just ran up the middle constantly. So it wasn't all on Tua, certainly. But uh, it was the first time we saw the game in his short career to this point kind of be put on him where you went, okay, they're, they're not going to be able to pull it off with interceptions and block punts and punt returns today. He's going to have to make some throws and plays, and he kind of hit a buzzsaw there, and it wasn't real pretty. All right, next one for me, and I don't think I've ever done this for a team that didn't play at all this weekend. But you know what? what? The Bears may be at their best when they don't play. <laughs> the Bears are back, baby. Here's why. <laughs> Packers lose. Vikings lose. Lions lose. Bears win. And, yeah, I may be, uh, full transparency, hyping our – Sunday night game a little bit prematurely, but next Sunday it night, make it interesting. Packers bears get together. And, and here's the thing. Packers are seven and three bears are five and five. If, if Matt Nagy and company can just kind of grope around in the dark and get lucky and find the reset button, whether it's Nick Foles, whether it's Mitchell Trubisky, whoever it may be at quarterback, they can get back into this thing. They 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 are they are still very much alive, and the fact that the Cardinals yeah, lost that's creates the other a bit one. of an opening. Hey, right. I do have I do have a complaint though. Whoever did the graphic, the Vikings are four and six, so I think they should be on the in the hunt. Graphic, oh, they even give though the a, enrollment we, papers. We don't know what you want anymore. Pending. We've given up with you and the Vikings. You're so all over the place. Who knows what you want anymore? You love them. You hate them. You love them. You hate them. Now he wants them in the playoffs. Who knows? Jeez. Oh, my gosh. I, I do have a message for you. What? There's a, a priest that used to be here in town who grew up in Minneapolis. He's a big Vikings fan. He was over to watch a game the Thursday night or last year when Washington and the Vikings got together. He told me to tell you that he has received the annulment papers and he has denied my request for an annulment with the Vikings. Oh, so a, if a priest says it, then that's that's it. It's it's binding. Okay. I can do about Fine. It. You're stuck. Kirk Cousins is yep. your quarterback, buddy. Here we go. You and the Vikings. And that's the truth, too. That's not just some dumb joke I'm trying. That's that's actually true. I got the text message from the priest on Friday to tell you the priest d denies the annulment request. Okay, good. So All right, I'm, glad. I'm stuck. You're, you're stuck. All right. Well, that's, that's you know, I don't know. You made that choice a long time ago. You should have to live with it anyways. I, I understand that. Um. All right. What the hell are we talking about? Oh, the Bears. That is unbelievable, though. And especially, wait, with five and five, and you said all the teams that lost Arizona, that loss, they're sitting there at six and four. And Arizona's got some tough games coming up here to where they could easily. It's Patriots, it's Rams coming up the next two weeks. They could lose both of those football games. You sit there and go, man, the Bears, as ugly as they have looked, they certainly are in the thick of things. And if they could pull off some magic on Sunday night against Aaron Rodgers and company, yeah, who knows what happens there. Um, Man, man, I'm going to go. My next one is bad mamma jammas. That's what they are. We haven't talked about it. We talked a little, but bad mamma jammas. That's what the Steelers got. They just got bad mamma jammas all over the field. That's, that's all I look at. Oh, uh, you know, oh, defense is bending. Whoa, Jacksonville's moving the ball. Oh, sack. Oh, interception. Oh, you know, forced fumble. Oh, offense looks bad. Oh, Claypool touchdown. Deontay Johnson bomb. I mean, it, th that's where I think it's almost like we don't give them the credit because there's moments where we just go, it, it, it doesn't look that dominant, but they always make the play and hang around. And it's just, you know, uh, that's where I give Mike Tomlin credit, you know, the GM, 
Kevin Colbert credit, just with everything they've done there. They have so many guys that are difference makers on both sides of the field where, yeah, even when they hit stale moments or the defensive scheme might not be, I mean, the scheme itself might not be hitting on all cylinders. It just doesn't matter. They have guys that we just go, we're better than you. Our guy's better than your guy. We're going to make a play. And that's what just jumps out to me about the Steelers, the interceptions by the safeties, the big plays by the receivers. Uh, it, it's just amazing how many studs they got out there. We, we really are going into the Wayback Machine today between my reference to the Stephen Stills song, Love the One You're With, Bad, Bad Leroy Brown, She's a Bad Man, Majama. I mean, we're, we're, we are. Uh, yeah, there, there, are there, there is a demographic out there that is wondering, what in the hell are these two guys talking about? <laughs> But but sure, I mean the Steelers really that that's the, you know when you when you start breaking it down and looking at who they have on that defense, it it is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's it's back to where we started. The idea that that why is this team not garnering more respect? And I think the best explanation is the one that you articulated. The idea that we still would in a game between the Chiefs and the Steelers, not we, not me collectively the sense would be that the chiefs are going to win i learned last week and, and this makes it easier for me the rest of the way i heard you yesterday saying that you're you're probably or at least thinking about picking the ravens on thursday night because they're going to be desperate and i started to think that too I, i've already cast my lot i will not pick against the steelers again this year because the two times i did they blew out the Browns and they blew out the Bengals. So uh, I'm on board. They they've just and I still think it goes back to last year when they when they didn't have Ben Roethlisberger and they found that magic where they stayed competitive in every game, no matter how bad the quarterback play was. I really do think that's helped them and it's made them into a powerhouse this season. And uh, it, it's fun to watch uh, unless you're the team that is playing the Pittsburgh Steelers that week all right do we have an um, do we have time for another one i don't know that i have another one okay we have time for another one now i have to find another one how about uh i, I let's let's give pj walker some credit this is the bring back the xfl award we we finally have a guy who played in one of these minor leagues right last year the aaf had some guys that trickled to the nfl and they never did anything we saw what garrett gilbert can or can't do at the nfl level uh, he was the AAF's darling a couple of years ago, and now this week we saw the XFL's darling in P.J. Walker, and no Teddy Bridgewater. Matt Rule. Matt Rule already has mastered injury information obfuscation. Christian McCaffrey, oh, he's day-to-day. -day. Sure he is. Mm -hmm. Teddy Bridgewater, I don't have any updates. Sure you don't. He's day-to-day. -day. Sure he is. They took it right up until 90 minutes before kickoff. Teddy Bridgewater scratched. P.J. Walker comes in, they shut out the Lions. Now, the defense had a lot to do with that, but, hey, I'm, for a guy in his first NFL start who was picked off of the XFL scrap heap, reunited with Matt Rule, I mean, if I'm if I'm David Tepper, the owner of the team, I'm thinking, man, I'm paying a lot to this Bridgewater guy. P.J. Walker, dollar for dollar, P.J. Walker's better. Well, dollar for dollar. I well, yeah, okay, dollar for dollar. And he's got a lot of he's got ability. He does. I mean, there, there's no doubt. You know, he really never loses control of the football. Pretty good athlete. I don't think like the skill set is. It probably is better than Bridgewater. Really, honestly, Mike, he just hasn't played as much football. You know, doesn't have that experience that way. But we saw yesterday. I mean, he is certainly capable of moving the ball. And his two interceptions, which were his two worst plays of the day, obviously we're in the end zone, you know, where they move the ball down the field effectively on those drives too. I mean, but so there's a lot to like, and you said, Matt rule, he's already mastered life in the NFL altogether. And that was embarrassing by the lions. I mean, there you are sitting in like, Oh, we got a chance here. We're four and five. We might be able to get back in this thing. And then just to lay an egg like that, you know, on the road against, yeah, a tough Carolina team, but not a great team. Nothing like that. Uh, that, that pretty much puts a, a fork in the, the Detroit Lions for the year, and that ends that. Renewed calls, widespread calls for Matt Patricia to be fired. Basically, the argument, and I saw this from Dave Burkett of the Detroit Free Press, if Sheila Ford Hamp doesn't do it now, then everything she said last year about what she expects in 2020 was false. Uh, I don't know that I'll go quite that far. I'll look at it and say it was just one game, but it was not 
a pretty game. It was the first shutout of the Matt Stafford era, which is saying a lot for a team that has typically found a way to score points. But when you don't have Kenny Galladay, you don't have DeAndre Swift, yeah. you don't have Danny Amendola, it makes it harder to move the ball and score points. But kudos to the Panthers at 4-7. and seven. Uh, they, they have uh, continued to outperform what we thought a rebuilding team would do because look at the Jets, a rebuilding team that can't win a game. Panthers in the same boat, but they have been able to be competitive and win plenty of games. All right, uh, do you have another one? Um, I mean, I was going to say something about Justin Herbert, you know, because of just the way yesterday, and we haven't talked about Joe Burrow because I don't even want to talk about it because I, I feel bad. Uh, but, like, with Justin Herbert, I almost wanted to give him, like, the Roy Award. I just think, like, with the facts of how he played yesterday, Joe Burrow getting hurt, man, rookie of the year is in, in, the, in the sights of Justin Herbert. And what I liked yesterday, just to hit on that game, I mean, that was the first time I felt like they played through the pass game first. They came out, we're going to throw the football, and then they ran off it. And they're more dangerous that way. And Herbert... You know, again, I know a lot of people aren't watching Chargers Jets, but holy crapola, Batman. I mean, it's just one unreal throw after another. Uh, and I just can't say how impressed I am. Not Don't necessarily love his haircut. I've seen better there. But his throwing, his right arm is really damn special. And his haircut doesn't look much different than yours, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I don't like it. He's trying to copy me. Give him that <laughs> luck. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I'm, I'm stunned. I'm stunned, I'm shocked, and I'm saddened that you would mention Joe Burrow's departure for the season, and we're both heartbroken by that, and uh, we wish him all the best, and we hope he's back for week one of next year. How can you talk about Rookie of the Year without mentioning your guy, Chase Claypool, the first receiver of You're the right. Super era to have 10 touchdowns in his first 10 games as a rookie, only the Freak fourth show. all time to do it? But, you know, I thought, oh, Randy Moss surely had 10 touchdowns in 10 games. Nope, he had seven. He had 10 in his final six, but he only had seven in right. his first 10. Right. And Chase Claypool has 10 touchdowns in 10 games. It is amazing. And there was a little kerfuffle last week, a little dust up, a little fracas, a little brouhaha, because ESPN had their top 10 rookies and Clay, uh, Chase Claypool was not on the list. Well, I think he'll be on everyone's list now. And, and, you know, it just fits to bring it all back to where we started. Yes. The Steelers are just guys, bad overlooked. Bad pajamas. I know. You're right. They're overlooked. And, yeah, because the stats aren't going to ring true. Like, he's not going to be a 80 or 90 reception guy, and he's probably not going to get to 1,000 yards. But for some of those guys and rookies and receivers who might have more stats than them, I would just go, I'd take Chase Claypool. Because when he touches the ball, it's game-changing type plays. It's touchdowns. You know, and it's all the other – you know, things he does for the offense because he is a weapon where coverage has to worry about him down the field. But, my, I, you know, I'll stand by what Mike Tirico and people at Notre Dame heard me say the last few years when I was there. I've never really seen a receiver built like Chase Claypool. He is one of the freakiest human beings I've seen in my life. You know, Brandon Marshall, whatever you want, he's right up there with as good as I've seen at that receiver position. And I'm just – you know, 10 touchdowns, am I surprised? Yeah, a little bit, but I'm not shocked that he's coming in the NFL and, and made a name for himself. And we do need to mention what happened to Joe Burrow yesterday. Ugh. You didn't see it. You don't want to see it. I saw the replay one time, and, and that's, that's all, you need. all you need to know. Yeah. ACL torn, more knee damage, feared MRI today. Joe Burrow made it clear with a tweet from late yesterday afternoon. Thanks for all the love. Can't get rid of me that easy. See you next year. He won't be playing again this season we can only hope he's good to go next year that plant leg is what got crushed uh in the in the game against Washington and uh here's hoping he's back and good as new because he was awesome awesome uh so far this season hi I'm Mike Tirico and thanks for watching make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports